Hi there and welcome back to the M5 Stack official channel. I'm Luke and today we're going to be looking at RS-232 communication. A lot of older devices such as this Cisco switch and industrial equipment use RS-232. Even some modern devices. Today we'll be using the M5 Atom RS-232 device and learning a little bit about RS-232. So let's get started. What exactly is RS-232? RS-232 is a communication standard developed way back in 1960 and was originally used to connect two computers together via a modem. So why has it survived until today? It's often used in an industrial environment as the cable length can be up to 15 meters. One useful feature in an industrial setting is that it has dedicated pins that can check whether the device on the other end is on or not and whether the data was transmitted or not. Typically an RS-232 device would use a DB25 or DB9 connector which looks similar to a VGA cable but should not be confused. So why then are there only four pins on the M5 Atom RS-232 module? This is because all we really need are the receive, transmit, ground and power pins. The function of the aforementioned pin can now be simulated via software serial. The device that we'll be communicating with today is a Cisco switch. Cisco hardware when bought new typically comes with one of these cables which has an RJ45 connector on one end and a DB9 connector on the other. We can make a substitute for this however with a simple Ethernet cable and the M5 Atom RS-232 module. First we'll have to butcher this Ethernet cable and strip the wire back so that we can access all the pins. Once you've done stripping the wires, spread the wires out so it's easier for us to use a multimeter to check which pins we need. The pinout is as follows. We need to connect the ground pin, which should be blue and white, to the ground of the M5 Atom RS-232 module. The orange pin, or third pin from the right if you have the connector facing down, is receive and should be connected to the transmit pin of the module. Finally, the transmit pin of the cable should be a white orange color, or the third from the left. This should be connected to the receive pin of the module. Once you're done and you've connected all of the necessary wires into the module, we'll connect the RJ45 connector up to the console port of the Cisco switch. Then we can attach the M5 Atom device and connect it up to the computer. First we'll start off with a blank sketch. You'll need to make sure that you have the M5 Atom libraries and the ESP32 board definition setup. If you've not done that, make sure to check out our other videos on this subject. Let's start by including the M5 Atom header file, and then we'll clear this setup loop. And then we'll use the M5 begin function to initialize the Atom. Now we're going to need to set up the serial communications. First we'll set up the serial communication for the device that we're going to connect to. We'll start by typing serial2.begin and then the first argument will be the board rate and generally Cisco routers use 9600 board. The next argument serial8n1 means that we are using 8 bits with no parity bit and one stop bit. If your device uses something different, you'll need to change this. Then we define the receive and transmit pins of the M5 Atom, which are 22 and 19. Now to set up the serial communication of the M5 Atom device itself. We type serial.begin followed by the board rate 115200 which is generally the most stable board rate for the M5 Atom. Now to our loop and we set up a if condition to check whether the serial 2 is available. 
Next, we'll create a variable and assign serial.read to it. On the next line, we'll make sure that the data from the Cisco router on serial 2 is written to the serial of the atom. Then we're going to create another if condition. This time, we'll make sure that if the serial of the atom is available, make sure to write to the router whatever data that we enter into the M5 atom serial. And that's it, that simple. Now let's save this sketch and go ahead and upload it, making sure we choose ESP32 Pico kit as the board and 115200 as the board rate and select your port and go ahead. Now we can click on the serial monitor up in the right hand corner. Make sure that you have the board rate set to 115200, then turn on the switch. Now we'll start to get the boot messages and we'll see for a moment it's decompressing the boot image. Once that's done we'll get a bunch of information followed by the command prompt. Now we can type commands into the top bar and hit enter or press send to send them to the switch. In this way we can configure the Cisco switch right inside the Arduino IDE. And there we have it. We can communicate with, hack, breathe life into our old devices using the RS232 module. Hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to like, subscribe, leave a comment if you like, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.